In this session, we're going to look at the autonomic nerve supply of the abdominal cavity and its organs. The only somatic supply is to the parietal peritoneum, but the visceral peritoneum and all the internal organs within the abdomen are supplied by sympathetics for vasoconstriction and for decreasing the peristaltic activity and closing the sphincters within the gastrointestinal tract. Now the main sympathetic supply arises in the thorax as the greater, lesser and least splanchnic nerves. The greater splanchnic nerve leaves the sympathetic ganglia of 5 to 9 on each side. The lesser splanchnic nerve arises from ganglions 10 and 11 and the least splanchnic nerve arises from the 12th ganglion. These nerves on each side approach the abdomen by passing through the left and right crura of the diaphragm. Now because all these nerves are preganglionic fibers, they need to synapse and they will do so in the various autonomic ganglia in the upper abdomen, the main ones being the celiac ganglia and the aorticorenal ganglia. Some of these postganglionic fibres then reach the renal plexus and are distributed to the kidneys, but the majority go on to blood vessels to supply the intestinal tract. Thus there will be postganglionic fibres on the three branches of the celiac axis and the superior mesenteric artery. The majority of these nerves will be used up on the vessels that we've mentioned, but some will continue down the abdomen on the anterior surface of the aorta and are distributed on the gonadal and the inferior mesenteric arteries. Because of the paucity of fibres at this stage, there need to be reinforcements from the lumbar splanchnics from the upper four ganglia, and these once again are preganglion fibres that need to synapse in pre-aortic ganglia and down in the superior hypogastric plexus. The superior hypogastric plexus lies just below the bifurcation of the aorta, and their fibres then pass down to the two inferior hypogastric plexuses, which together are called the pelvic plexus. From these two plexuses, fibres are distributed to the organs of the pelvis. But once again, these fibres are running out and we need to reinforce them with sacral splanchnics, which come from the sympathetic chain at S1, 2, 3 and 4. So before leaving the sympathetics, just let's emphasise that all the fibres that leave the chain are preganglionic if they're going to the abdomen, and all these fibres need to synapse before they are finally distributed. The only exception is the branch of the greatest splanchnic nerve, which goes to the adrenal gland, which is a preganglionic fibre, and the adrenal gland itself is regarded as the postganglionic fibre. Now let's turn our attention to the parasympathetic supply. The supply for the upper abdomen, which includes the foregut, and the midgut is from the vagus nerves, the tenth cranial nerves. They enter the abdomen through the esophageal opening with the left vagus lying on the anterior surface of the esophagus and the right one on its posterior surface. The rule with the parasympathetics is that the fibres are preganglionic until they reach the end organ where there is a small ganglion in which they synapse. These parasympathetic fibres enter the celiac plexus and then are distributed to the three branches of the celiac axis and the superior mesenteric artery and to the kidneys. As there are no parasympathetics to the gonads, we don't encounter them on the gonadal arteries. So we can conclude that the parasympathetic supply is to all the intestines down to two-thirds along the transverse colon.